What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to cover NEO's March and first quarter delivery numbers, as well as something that happened in Beijing that's actually relaxing a lot of concerns around Chinese companies being delisted. Also make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to cover a potentially huge catalyst that anybody who's invested in NEO or is looking to invest in NEO should definitely know about. So make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video to see what that is. But before we actually get into all the details, for those of you who are new here, my name is Evan and I make videos that show you guys different ways of making money in the stock market. So if that interests you guys, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss when I upload. Also, if you guys wouldn't mind going down and hitting the like button, I'd really appreciate it and it lets me know that you guys enjoy these video updates. Now with that out of the way, right now NEO is actually trading down and they're down about 5% right now and they're currently trading at 2260. When the market opened, they were right around $24 and they pulled back in the first couple hours of trading, pulling back to the mid $22 range. And now they've just been bouncing off about $22.50 up to about $22.75 for the past few hours. And taking a look at the one week chart, and NEO is still up 3.7% with their low on the week at about $21 and their high at right around $24. But I think where NEO is really shining is on the one month chart because they're actually up 15.7%. And if you had invested at the bottom this month, which was on March 14th, NEO was trading in the low $14 range. And now they're at 2260. And if you had bought in at that point, you'd be up about 50% in the past three weeks of trading. Now, of course, we can't all buy in at the bottom because you never know when a stock is at the bottom. But even if you had bought in at any point this month, you'd still be up because they're up almost 16% on the monthly chart. Now, there are a few things that are really affecting NEO and why they've actually been going up this past month. But one of those things is actually their March and quarter one deliveries. So in the month of March alone, NEO almost delivered 10,000 vehicles at 9,985 vehicles. This shows an increase of 37.6% year over year. And in the first three months of 2022, NEO has delivered 25,768 vehicles. This isn't quite as big of an increase from March of this year as March of last year, but it still shows a 28.5% year-over-year growth. And this is despite everything that's been going on in the world over the past year. And then cumulatively speaking, deliveries of vehicles as of March 31st have reached 192,838. And one thing that's important to note is that NEO actually began deliveries of the ET7 on March 28th. And in a matter of just three days, they actually delivered 163 ET7s. So if they were to keep up this pace for an entire month, that's about 55 deliveries per day. And then if you times that out over 30 days, that'd be over 1,500 deliveries for the ET7s. That almost puts the ET7 on pace to compete with the ES8. So to see the ET7 almost competing with the ES8, which has been around a lot longer than ET7, I think it shows that NEO is going to see some pretty big growth in the next few months as more customers take delivery of the ET7 and as more orders are placed. And then looking forward to late May of 2022, which is just in about a month here, NEO actually plans to unveil the 2022 NEO ES8, ES6, and EC6. And then in the meantime, NEO's ES7, which is their new mid to large five-seater SUV, is going to be equipped with NEO Technology 2.0 or NT2, which is also going to make its debut. And I also want to touch on NEO's battery swap stations, because for those of you who don't know, NEO is actually a company where they allow their vehicles to swap batteries. So instead of charging up your vehicle every time, you can drive into one of these swap stations and it literally takes the battery out from underneath the car and swaps in a new fully charged battery. And currently, as of the end of March, NEO has deployed 884 power swap stations, 727 power charge stations, and over 3,800 destination chargers in China. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there's a pretty big catalyst and it actually has to do with NEO's battery swapping technology. But before we actually touch on that, I just want to go over quick what's happening in Beijing and why this is helping relax delisting concerns of different Chinese companies on U.S. exchanges. So in short, Chinese electric vehicle stocks actually gained after Beijing confirmed plans to revise their confidentiality rules in regards to overseas listings. This move could potentially help Chinese companies avoid being delisted in the U.S. And there was also some support from Wall Street where UBS issued a positive breakdown on the Chinese electric vehicle sector. And they also gave their view and said that the risk reward profile is more favorable following the big pullbacks 
in different share prices that we've seen so far in 2022. And there was also a consumer survey conducted by the firm that revealed that 73% of Chinese consumers are likely to consider buying a battery electric vehicle as their next car as compared to 68% in 2021. And then they also went on to say that despite increasing investor concern on the backlash to electrification from raw material price inflation, we expect China EV penetration to rise from 16% in 2021 to 25% in 2022 in passenger cars. And the key drivers to this are going to include continuously improving customer acceptance and brand recognition, as well as expediting investment by car makers in technology products, branding, and distribution channels. And referring to NEO specifically, UBS actually upgraded NEO to a buy rating from neutral after noting their approximately 30% share price decline over the past three months and in anticipation of the NT2 model cycle this year. Now this leads into the last thing that I wanted to go over and this is that potentially huge catalyst for NEO. Recent reports actually claim that NEO may be looking to license out their battery swapping technology. Now this would be huge for NEO because they would be making money off of other electric vehicle companies by allowing them to use their technology. Right now, at least that I know of, NEO is the only company that's doing battery swapping and they're making use of this pretty effectively in China right now because the battery swapping option alleviates the limited range of electric vehicles, which is actually one of the biggest factors that holds the market back. So you can just imagine if NEO were to license out their battery swapping technology, this could open the way for a lot more EV companies to make use of it and they could expand their business, which in turn would make more money for NEO. So basically by doing this, this would allow NEO to create an extra source of income from other companies' successes in the EV market. And one of the managing directors of NEO in Europe actually backs this idea up by claiming that the EV company plans to license their battery swapping technology in the near future. Now, I don't necessarily know what they mean by near future or how soon that could happen, but NEO themselves have actually remained pretty quiet when they've been asked additional details about this plan. And with 868 locations right now for battery swapping in China, it's been a pretty big success for NEO right now, and it's been one of the things that separated them from a lot of other EV companies. And each of these locations actually holds 13 EV batteries for swapping, and while the locations are quite a bit more expensive to build than a charging station, they offer a lot of benefits, mainly the one of convenience where a customer can just drive in, have their battery swapped in I believe under three minutes and then drive away with a full charge. So rather than having to wait at a charging station, which could take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, you're getting in and out in the same time it takes to fill a normal car with gas. And then additionally, it's also possible that NEO will start opening battery swap stations outside of China. They've been making moves to expand further into other countries, including the US, and they're also making plans to expand more in Europe. Now, the only concern I have with NEO licensing out their battery swapping technology is that then they wouldn't be the only company that has this battery swap technology. Right now, that's one of the things that really separates them from other companies. And I think that's one of the big factors as to why people would buy a NEO vehicle. If they end up licensing that out to other companies and other companies start incorporating that into their vehicles, well then NEO is not going to be the only one and people may consider other vehicles if they have the same technology. So it's kind of a double-edged sword here because NEO would benefit from the companies by using their technology and they would earn quite a bit of extra income as the other companies succeed. But on the other hand, if they kept the technology all for themselves, it would motivate a lot more people to buy a NEO vehicle over other competitors. But what do you guys think? Do you think NEO would actually benefit more from licensing out their battery swapping technology or keeping it all to themselves and hoping that they gain more customers and that that would make up for the price difference versus licensing it to other companies? I'd like to hear what you guys think down in the comments. Also, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like because it really does help out the channel. And with that said, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you back here in the next one.